We had a busy week with this podcast lately. I mean, just not only just a couple of days ago, we had, you know, a superstar comedian, actor, you know, uh, writer, producer, artist, former uh, Wild and Out member, uh, Atheon Crockett was up in here. Now it's Halloween night. The voodoo is afoot. Nobody's knocking on my door. <laughs> From what I see, yet. I, don't yet. No, I don't got no candy. I, actually, I do, but it, I don't, I'm not sharing it. But, um, yeah, so we thought it was wise to bring in someone who is, I would say, he very much dresses up in a lot of costumes <laughs> <laughs> for what the content that he does, not just on the pro wrestling side, but also in, you know, the media side of things. And honestly, um, this is like, I would say this is the grandfather of pro wrestling and media and YouTube. Mm. And media and you know, like social media and all this stuff. The man right here, Mr. Matt Cardona. Oh, thanks for the intro. On, I appreciate man. it, man. Thanks for having me. I, I, I be I be going off the top with these intros too. I don't write nothing. <laughs> I'm like freestyle. Always freestyle. ready, my man. Yeah, I try to stay ready, man. But yeah, for real, I like this. Is like a, a give you a roses type of episode for you because oh, like thank you so with, much. Without you, without <laughs> you, like showing us like the way to make it your make it on your own, really build your platform as a professional wrestler under, under contracts, whether you're on the indies, international, wherever you are, you can make a, you can make a whole, you can make a whole like brand for yourself right. you on your to. own outside of that. Or just like, while you're still not being used, not being seen, not being whatever, you can still find a way to get over in so many different unique ways. And you open up a whole new pathway for that. Hmm. So man, thanks dude. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we at. And the TZ over here, uh, what is good, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in. I pulled him up. Our city after, podcast. I got him off the couch. Come through. I was like, hey. Hey, I back on the couch. Come back to the professional couch. Transfer couches. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Thank you for this episode 68, man. We got the legend Matt in the building. Feeling good. Make sure you guys, once again, hit the subscription, hit the like button. Always comment, show love, share this episode. We got a legend in the building. This guy is a pioneer. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great, man. And let's get it. Yo, and um, not to mention, Big Pressure Remix video almost at, actually, no, it just passed 50,000 views wow. on the AEW page. Congratulations, bro. So, and we got the, you know, we got the platinum, we got the platinum, we got the million mark, million views, million, That's million listens, nice. million Congrats, downloads. Dude. Thank you very much. So me and Big, uh, me and uh, Flash Garments, Big Pressure. So go check that out, you know, you know download that anywhere you want. Varsity Jacket, man. We, we, I'm, I'm trying to get. I want the plaque. I got a lot of stuff hanging here, but I don't got a plaque. I yet. like this room. I like the stuff you yeah, got. Yeah, thank display. you, I, thank I, you. I appreciate it. There's like I want. I don't want to see no paint. I want to fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal, right? You know. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. With like little nuggets in between here, but we gonna figure it out, bro. I'll make it work. But how's everything been going with you, bro? Everything's good. Uh, you know, trying to keep busy. Uh, in the independent wrestling scene. Um, I got my own podcast, the Major Wrestling Fever Podcast. Cheap plug. Uh, oh, get just, it just trying to be as busy as possible, you know, make that money, have fun. Um, and, and I'm always ready. It's not just a gimmick and a hashtag, but I'm always ready for whatever opportunity is true itself. So whatever it is, whether it be like a GCW show or go to Japan or some random indie show where it's like did this day exist in my life. You know right, what I'm saying? It's right. like a show. <laughs> you don't get one tweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, did I, did this day exist? But, but you funny. know, it's dope. That, like, <laughs> What, like, okay, so you say you promote a show that you're going to be at yeah. or whatever, and it's not getting the plugs, right. it's not getting the traction that you desired. I think one of my favorite things is, like, the goal is to, like, man, after the show, is like, you missed it. Absolutely. You need to be here ne next time, you know. It's, I think there's, like, that's our, like, little pride of ourselves is, like, being on the indies and being like, yo, we put this place on the map. Now Absolutely. it's a hotbed. You want to be the guy that put the place on the map, you know? That's so, one thing about, yeah. like, these indie shows. Like, listen, I understand. When someone books you or books yeah. me or books whoever, they're not paying you to promote the show. Right. But my philosophy is, if I don't make it a big deal, then who else is going to make it a big deal? And that's the the tweets leading up to the show. And then, like you said, after the show, posted about it too. Like, hey, you missed out. This is what happened. Yeah. Because it's... I hate to say it, but perception's reality. Yes. So if I treat this show like it's nothing, then who, why would anyone else care about it? Yo, my man, Emilio Sparks always gave me the, he gave me this little nugget of an idea. Like it was, had to be like over, over five years ago, but he gave me something that was like, I was trying to capture that lightning in a bottle right. type feeling. I was on that, that cusp of my career. And he, he told me optics is everything. Sure. And I was like, that just altered everything in my mind, how to approach just pro wrestling, yes. how to pro approach the way I look, the way I promoted myself, 
you know, branding, like your merch. So important. It's just like optics is everything. And that's when like gifts and Twitter really start just yes, getting a yes, lot of Russell yes, promotion. Absolutely. On the so like, so we got to go way back, man. Talk about you starting up the YouTube page mm. back when um you still on WWE, yep. like that grind. Like talk about that whole mind state and just like what adopted the idea to like, you know, I'm going to take this into my own, I'm going to take this and put it in my own control and put right. it on my own power. Uh, so that's 2011, the beginning of 2011. By that time, I had been with WWE on the main roster since 2007. Uh, did the ma- the Major Brother thing, the Edgehead yep. thing, doing the woo-woo thing. But, like, I was just in that spot, right? And I yep. knew this was going to be my spot, just kind of just being another guy on the show, already in the ring. And, like, that's fine, I guess. But that's not what I wanted. That wasn't my right. dream. Uh, you know, I pitched every idea under the sun to the writers, and it just wasn't happening. So I thought, okay, well, the only way to get out of this is to do something myself. And I didn't have this grand master plan. I knew that I had to create something. Uh, for Christmas, my parents got me a flip camera. This is, the, this is how okay. it is. We're, we're going way back. Flip okay. camera. Oh. I'm going to do this flip camera. Yeah. I'm like, well, what if I film myself and I do like a YouTube show? And like, you can go, I did 100 episodes. You can watch. The yeah. editing sucks. Like, it's all me doing it. I didn't know right. I was doing, but I was teaching myself how to do it. But it was the groundwork. It was your laying right. the groundwork. Absolutely. To and and I knew that, okay, I need to let the fans know. First of all, it's all about the connection with the fans, with the audience. Yes. So they have to love you, hate you. If they don't care about you, you're dead in the water. So I knew I had to create a connection with the fans, and there's only so much I can show them if I'm on TV, already in the ring, yeah. whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I needed to show my personality, and... I wasn't the first person to have, like, Twitter or the first person to even do, like, a, a web show. But I think I was the first person to blend my real-life personality with my wrestling character. True. And okay. that... But it, and, and it wasn't on a wrestling show. It right. Was all, it was all Right. So brands. I was still, like, yeah. Zack Ryder. I, you know, I was still the name Zack Ryder. And I was yeah. still, like, the rest... I was show stuff that I was doing on television. But it was mostly, like, showing... My other sides, like I collect figures or I like Star Wars. or yeah. Then I started incorporating like my dad or my gym buddy as, as characters on the show. Right. And slowly it started to pick up steam and like it was like a snowball effect. Holy right. shit. Like it just started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger um, to the point where I think WWE, they had to use me. Yeah. Just I don't want to say to shut the fans up, but like, hey, like they were chanting my show, chanting my name at shows I wasn't even at. Like they had to use me. Yeah. It was undeniable. I remember that point. time, man. Yeah. And it, like the coolest thing was like, oh, well, one thing I always wanted to ask about that time was like, how much was there any like real? Because like it's different now. Yes. Like how people can have their own platforms and right. do what they want to do and build their own brand. Like yeah. you have like you know, uh, you have your twitches and all sure, that stuff sure, you do sure. that now. Um, but how much was there pullback with that? Was there a lot of resistance? So, it was like so they yes. blocking you in certain areas. <laughs> yes and no. So I knew yeah, yeah. I knew first I can't monetize this channel. I can't try to be making money. Because I was trying to think of every everything they would say to me, like th- why not to do it. So I'm like, I couldn't give them any ammo. So if I wasn't yeah, making smart. money, that's yeah. smart. That's smart. If I'm not yeah. making I'm not monetizing, I'm not making money. I'm just trying to get myself over. And I also right. didn't want to and moan about my spot. I had to think of ways to complain without without moaning right so for instance t- like there's a scene I'm so familiar like I'm, I'm i'm climbing over a fence and someone says what are you doing i'm like i'm trying to get, get over. over or like when my my big gym buddy's pushing me i'm like nobody pushes Zach right like, <laughs> stuff like that instead of like just sitting there be like poor me i'm not used blah blah right. blah. no one wants to see that shit. no one yeah. wants to hear that shit. and nobody so, wants to root for that no nobody wants to root no. for the whining guy no. yeah and, and my philosophy was if i come out and say like i'm the lowest guy on the totem pole nobody can tweet and be like you're a job well no <laughs> if I say it, you you have no ammo. Like the fans have no ammo to insult right. me. Right. So they started like getting behind me. And to answer the question, like was there pushback? Eventually there was. Right. You know, right. eventually when it, it started was, working. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first couple episodes, nobody knew what the fuck was going. On. Like I was right. just doing it. I wasn't hiding it. I was I was seeing. It. I remember seeing it, and I'm like, Wait, what's going on? What's what's happening? And then like seeing like the the responses from the crowd, like yeah. on every show on week, I was like, oh, that's from this and yeah. that's where it started coming together like yo okay youtube and making a platform and getting to get, making their own thing on the outside that really can work and i was definitely like, can work Absolutely. yeah but like it was a like do you think do you think people were afraid to try it because there's always the afraid of like being the first guy to do something sure. like it gets the most scrutiny they get the most i just think it, it, it was stuff. it was so unknown like i didn't yeah. have this grand plan so i start i started that show february uh 2011 like Lowest guy in the totem pole. Right. 
I end 2011, like, teaming with John Cena winning the U.S. title. So, like, I went from <laughs> literally nothing to, not the top, but pretty close. That's, no, you know that's what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And just, just from kind of betting on myself and not stopping. And I can't not give credit to the fans because it was right. the fans, whether it was buying my merchandise or chanting my name or bringing signs. And that's another thing. I knew this show needed to be interactive. So I would be like, all right, yeah. who's going to be the broski of the week? And people would film videos yeah. auditioning to be like my biggest fan for the week. Or I would say sign of the week. And then it would entice fans to bring Zack yeah. Ryder signs to shows. And so it was all interactive. And what's crazy about that, like that definitely inspired a new generation. Cause like shout out Casey Navarro. Sure. He, he was, he grew up absolutely a big fan of yours. Right. And now he's like a uh, freaking Warriors wrestling champion, right, right. like killing and, and on it's the crazy for me. Like, like wrestling guys like him. Yeah. If you feel old as <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jay Malachi. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure if you know him right now, but like he said, like, yeah, I had the first, like, what got me wanting to wrestle was I watched a match with you and Leo Rush. I'm yeah. like, am I, is it that, are we past that? <laughs> like, I thought I was still, like, kind of right, young right, in my, right, like, right, little, right, right, I'm still sure. coming up stage. Yes, I'm like, yes, wait, yes. wait, that I match. I still feel that way too. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, like the, but you don't understand, like, that's the thing. You don't understand how far this reaches. That's what, and that kind of stuff like that is what inspires us to keep doing these podcasts. Sure. To keep trying different guests and tr keep trying to have different conversations and hear their stories. Because it's like, they, this might this conversation might spark somebody else's Absolutely. like inspiration to start that and build up and then take it to another level right. that we didn't think was possible. Yeah. You know, be you know innovative. You know, yeah, and you know, the 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 moral of this this YouTube show like the yeah. was was I didn't want to have a YouTube show. It wasn't like I want to have a YouTube show. It right. was I want to get noticed. Yes. And when I first started the show, I knew there's a good chance I can get fired, and my goal mm -hmm. was to get noticed or get fired. I didn't want to get fired, but I knew I wanted to create so much buzz that one of one or the other would happen. And I knew at the time, all right, well, if I get fired for this, like I'll just go to TNA or something like that. Like, right. I knew I'd have buzz somewhere. So that was the whole goal was to get noticed or get fired. I got noticed, won the U.S. title, like I said, and then like I wanted to end it. I thought that was a perfect ending to yeah. the whole year. You know, start from the bottom. Now I'm at the top. Let's end the show. WWE had a different idea. Like, well, mm. this is successful. We're going to start our own YouTube channel, and your show's going to be on it. And it wasn't like, you want your show on it? It's like, no, your show's, show's going to be, be on it. On it. <laughs> That's hilarious. So you got to love it. It went from something that I was doing, it was a passion project, and it was yeah. fun, to now it became a job. You know, because mm. now, you know, it had to be done. Now, they were editing it. Not no. Let me take it you back. Yeah. No, I was still editing it, but they were approving. They were you, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so we, they were taking we through the, that same. So thing. they were taking <laughs> things out. Like I was still the one doing all the work. I was still the one funding it. I was still the one writing it, buying all the, like the costumes. It was still me. It's funny how like the, there's certain things get approved and like oh we'll let you go as long as like just you, you do the work. Yes, now. yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. you do the work. Send it to us, and then we'll let you know. Sure, but yeah, some things get passed. Like, and that's and that's another way about like guys who are trying to like get over. You know, trying to figure out their way. Like, do just just do the work and just like present it. I mean, if you, don't do, the, work, yeah. if you don't do the work, it's it's not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, some people are the chosen ones, and that's great. But most Those, of us aren't. That's like the, the but that's like a like, you know, only room on the yes. shelf for like yes. two trophies. Yes. You know, yes. like you know, so those are those guys, but or girls, but you know, in the position like. I, I, truth be told, I think fans connect more with the guys that do grind and. I like, I, I do think so. you know absolutely yeah, the true they, wrestling they, fans yeah. who are who are really invested. I agree. Yeah, yes. they they connect with the guys that grind from the bottom because it's and, obvious, and they want that story. They yes. like that. They they want that feeling of like I was with him all the way up. It's like one hundred percent. It's like uh, being a fan of your favorite band, right? You know, like I was with these guys in that 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 bar across the street that sure. I work at. Absolutely. Or me and my buddy used to walk across the get drinks over there, and then we go see this yes, band. Yes, now yes, they're yes. selling out this. People love that story, the feeling of like I had the first shirt of exactly. this, and then yeah. grinding and then going right. all the way up there, you know. Yeah, but I think it's what I what I find interesting too when you tell just told the story is, it's like you were at the point of frustration. You was at a point where you was like, okay, you know what, I'm going to be innovative and I'm going to do this, and you know what, I'm just going to throw a caution into the wind, and whatever happens, happens. Well, I had nothing you know? to lose, really. Right, right. You had you really had nothing to lose, and it's just funny how. Well, That's we, my job, but I was willing to do it. Yeah. Right, absolutely. You kind of get to that point where you're like, yeah. you know what, F it. You know what I mean? Yes. It is what it is. I'm going to do this, and either I'm going to find every other loophole around it, yeah. and either this is really going to work or it really isn't, but I'm going to invest in myself. And it really tells a story about, even with, with Swerve as well, how it, when you when you 
either even leave a situation or you're in a situation where you feel like you're back against the wall. Sink what, or swim. What we could do as human beings to really, you know, shine and get ourselves to a, another certain point. And you're definitely an innovator of that and one of the first people doing that, well, you know, thank you, man. especially in the digital age and the yeah. age that we're in now. To be able to take that to the next level. Truth be told, now. you might have you might have even changed how WWE operates. Yeah, truth be told, <laughs> truth I'm be told, I'm not gonna say that, but I appreciate it. I will. <laughs> truth hey, be we told, got, we yeah. got we got episodes like um, bought out for the WWE Network, and like so, I would say like the Swerve City Podcast is an yeah. extension of what right. you created. Oh, you know, well, so if I can take some credit, sure, give me some credit. Oh, of course, that's why we're here, bro. That's why we're here. Um, oh, that's me. But back to the the YouTube show. Once I brought it over to the WWE channel. Um, you know, the first year of my career is going up, 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 up. Then after I bring it over to the channel, coincidentally, it starts going down, 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 yep. down. Yep. Like the, 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 you, made, you went mainstream, bro. You know, the, the, we don't... The, the getting pushed off the stage in the wheelchair, all that oh. stuff from Kane. Um, you know, and people like, you know, they, they like to say like you were buried or blah, blah, blah. And listen, I think I, not only did I innovate, you know, social media, I think I also invented the passive aggressive negative tweet, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but when I look at it, <laughs> oh, now, that, now that's worn out now. Yeah, to right, this right, day, right. that thing has been worn to death. But when I look back, I, I like to take accountability for myself and I will put all the situation, all, all the blame of that situation on myself. I, I was going to ask I you I about never that. want to be someone who's like, they held me down or right. they bear. I never wanted to be that guy. Um, so like when I look back, you know, could I have went to Vince McMahon and said, Hey Vince, like I'm one of the top merch sellers. I'm busting my ass. I'm over. His Why is this happening? I could have, but I didn't. So I blame myself, mm. you know, for not, for not questioning why, why, you know, am I here and I'm going lower and lower and lower and lower right, down the right. card while I'm still working my ass off? So I blame myself. I don't I, I don't want to blame the company. I don't want to say I was buried. I don't want to do any of that shit because then, like, just bitter and negative and, right. oh, well, it that sucks. Well, that, well, you took that, like, I don't want to say you took that energy, but you took that and you put it into something else and you put it into yourself and you put it into your work. Yeah. You didn't, like, necessarily, like, like moan and cry right. about it. You just, like, no, okay. This didn't happen. I'm going to put it into this and make sure it doesn't happen sure. again. Right. You know, um, like I remember um, listening to an interview that you did before and you talked about like, uh, man, like you never had that communication. You never built that relationship with your boss and right. stuff like that. And I was, I, when I got to NXT, I was always made sure like, and I always at least want to like talk to trips. Sure. Yes. At Very least, important. Like, at least ask. Yes. There's no harm. Like, you're not going to get fired for asking no. questions. Like not, not necessarily demanding but when you work hard and you like do well and you like you you deserve the right to ask. Sure, I, I agree. You know, if you're not like ruffling feathers, feathers and stuff, and if you're performing well, right. Of course, you reserve that right. You know, and so like I, I always like I, I learned that from definitely listening to your interviews before, and I hear hearing that, and I was like, wow, and this is like way before I even got there. It was just like, okay. Boom, that was information. Yes. So you put information out there for yeah. somebody. Somebody got it. And, and towards just, the, let you, just let you know, right, no, I was I somebody that, that got that. You and, know? and towards the tail end of my uh, run in WWE, I did start, you know, I grew up not only as a wrestler, I grew up as a man. So, like, I yeah. got to WWE, I was 20 years old. Yeah. Vince McMahon is a guy I've been idolizing since my childhood. I was scared, intimidated yeah. to go in there. And eventually, I just had the balls to do it, yeah. you know, and would ask the questions or pitch things just directly to him. Because, um, listen, the writers are the writers, but nothing. Go to the writers. Go to Vince. Vince, the guy. That's it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the one that's no, writing no for. writers is going to. This writer is going to maybe go to Vince. No, to Vince. Yes. That, and that's what I did the last two or three years of my career. Some ideas worked. Some didn't. But that was the only way mm -hmm. for me to do. Well, why pitch his idea to this writer who's going to maybe pitch it to this writer who's going to maybe tell this guy who might go to Vince? Because you want to respect the chain of command, you yeah. and all that. <laughs> that's something I learned along the way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, Just go man. right to the man. That's that wrestler mentality, man. It's like. Man, like, yes, this works in the military. Yes, this works as yeah. your job. Wrestling is like this uh, plane of like professionalism, yes. career, job, but it's also an art form and it's also a sport. Do you want to like go to the, like, you got to go to the coach. And, and listen, gotta, I'm not you know, saying pitching to the writers is pointless because there are certainly, out of all the pitches I pitched, some did work and some yeah, did change yeah. my career. Like, you know, I didn't go to, uh, Vince McMahon for the Edgeheads thing. That was our idea that we pitched through the writers or the, the, Break it up from Hawkins, doing the woo. So that was my idea that I pitched to the I didn't go to Vince for that. Right, right. So pitching stuff to the writers does work. But the best person to pitch to is the boss, whether it be yeah. Vince or Triple H or Tony Khan or whoever. 
Absolutely. I, sure. I attest to all of them. Yeah. I talked to all three of them. Yes. But yeah, um, man, so with that being said, you have your missus yes. doing very well. Yes. I I would say out of like everybody that been called back from like the situation like last year or a year ago, Chelsea is like been on top. Yes, for as, sure. As far as like that that list, that, and it's a long list too. Yeah, this is a, with a lot of talented people. Absolutely, she's she's a big standout. Yeah, and she's consistent. Yes, consistent on TV. How much of that do you think was like, um, was of course she has a lot of hard hard work and drive. She's always been like that. Sure, but um, do you think like your influence was there as well? Like her asking questions, or you feel like you like put her in like just knowledge wise. I think one thing that Chelsea has. Uh, working to her advantage, even before she got fired. Right, right. Like, she did not grow up loving wrestling. She did not yeah. grow up mm. idolizing Vince McMahon. So, to her, Vince was just her boss. You know, like, mm-hmm. you worked at Walmart. You worked at a bank. Like, she, right. I was just the boss guy. So, she had no problem going in and asking questions or pitching stuff. Where, for me, like I said, like, the first couple of years, I was petrified to knock yeah. this door right, right. you know what i'm yeah, saying so right. she always was uh, a go-getter always driven so i don't think she learned any of that for me she was just naturally a right. go-getter for sure right yeah but even so with like creative stuff yes. like because she's very creative with the, very with creative the, with and you know she's she too. you know she takes acting classes you know she does yeah. all the extra stuff you know and she was ready when she got that call back to go to wwe like she yeah. not only was she busting her ass on the indies but she was getting in great shape. She was taking all the acting classes and yeah. she never really got her opportunity in WWE before. I, I agree. You know? yeah, yeah. I so, was there. I seen it. Yeah, I you was know, like, it's my indie shtick for her to go back, but I told her like, this isn't even a conversation. Like, you have to go back. Right. Like, you didn't have a cup of coffee. You didn't even have the pot in the Keurig machine. That's you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to go and try it for yourself because Man. she was NXT. Then she like broke her arm. Then she was called up. Then she broke her arm. <laughs> then she got fired. Like she, it was bad luck, she, you know? Ah man, I was always she needed to be sleeveless, like in a straight jacket. Yeah. She always <laughs> yeah. broke her arms. Yeah. I was like, again? Yeah. Wait, now the other one? Yeah. I was like, oh good so, lord. It, she just didn't have good luck in no. that first run. So I'm glad she's back, killing it, tag team champion. So she's doing really, really well. Yeah, like even even in that, like broken tag teams. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Like right. she's still finding right. a way yeah. to make she it work. Really, yeah. She really does a great job making anything work. Man. Yeah. She does a phenomenal job. And that builds that. that equity over there too. For sure. But like we know Chelsea can make this work. So yeah. she's always going to be in a spot and, and, to make something she, work. She man. gets it. You know, like when she re-debuted in the Royal Rumble, um, I think like she just comes out and gets like thrown out. And like people like online or other wrestlers were like, that's how they're using you. I'm like, no, this is your you're character. You're a character. Like, yeah. you're, this is accentuate that character. At, yeah. at this point, if you're in WWE, you can wrestle. You can do the moves. And that's important, but you need the character. Yes. You have the character. We also like, gotta, on. y'all got, you always gotta, like, to fans that do this debating between AEW and WWE and the indies and stuff, stop it. Because if you, if you understand they are a sports entertainment company, right? You understand, sure, and you'll accept things a little yes, differently yes, too. For sure. You can't like say like, why is AEW not doing it this way? Why is WWE not doing what AEW does? Right. Because you don't want them to do what no, each other's doing. No, of course not. And, different. Uh, yeah, for a reason, and you that's why they're that. both successful separately. Yes, you know? and yes. yes, they are. We are both successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't say like, oh, they, things are going down. Like WWE went down. Sure, they came back up. AEW was up. Then came down. It's yes. going to go back up again. And it's like, and it's just going to have these ebbs and flows because that's the way the economy is. That's the way right. the business is. You got to look at all these other things and that play into things. But if you understand, like, they, this is, a, I watched this for, to get this out of this. And yeah. I watched this to get that out of it. And as a performer as well, if you cater more towards that, what your product is, what your, they ask for, what they look for in their job, just like any other job. Yes. Just like any job. Target doesn't work the same way Walmart right. does. I'm sorry. Right. They're similar, like, but they're they, different. They're similar, but yeah, they're going to do right. some things exactly. differently, and they're going to yes. provide a different service that For Walmart sure. would do. Absolutely. And that's how wrestling and these different companies like Impact and TNA and all these other things. Just so, like, the tribalism is weird. I, I like it, it because I like people. I like I like it because I like I personally like people waving a flag for something. Sure, no, I, I, you know I what appreciate mean? that, yes. Yeah, I like it because like, I'm a Rams fan, so screw the Cardinals, screw yes, these yes. guys, but, like, if you want to, that I can understand. I don't yeah. like fans who like want another company to like whether they want WWE, yeah, they want a business or a dub. Like, why would yeah. you want that? Because this is the best time I think for a wrestling fan. You said that for recently. a wrestler, like, yeah. How can you deny that? I think that's undeniable. There's everything you want is out there. Every every night it, of the week, 
You can watch wrestling. And you could just like, you literally are probably 30 minutes from a show. It's, it's crazy. Every time. It's crazy. Every week. Every week. This is the best time for sure. 100%. Uh, something that I wanted to ask you both, right? Especially if you guys, as both of you guys have extended, extended at what you guys are doing now. Talk about, you know, especially with you, Matt, I'll start with you first and then sort of chime in. When, you know, when you both left WWE, when were you guys at that point? Like what was what was the mindset of saying, okay, I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to improve my brand, and I'm going to reach my dreams and, and, and invest in myself to the point where, you know what, not saying it's an F you to the situation, but, right. like, you know, I want to get to the point where I can build my own brand to the point where I can show that I can do this myself. Sure. What was your motivation behind that when you, when not only when you left, but to the point where you're at now? So it's kind of a loaded question. So let me, let me backtrack a little Absolutely. bit. So sure. before I get fired. It's a loaded episode. <laughs> yeah. Before I get fired, um, Brian Myers, Kurt Hawkins, whatever, I pitched him a K. Let's start a podcast about wrestling figures. Long story short, he agrees to do it. But I know, I learned from the YouTube show, if we're going to do this, it's not going to be yeah. Zach and Kurt because they own it. Like yep. all, anything you do in WWE it's Whether you do it on your own, if you're using that intellectual property, it's there. So like Z True Long Island story, all that stuff, it's WWE. So yeah. I knew if we're gonna do this, let's do it as Matt and Brian. But first of all, let me say we did try to pitch at WWE. They had they they had no interest in podcasts or collectibles, mm -hmm. and we were like, All right, we're doing it on our own. Yeah. That's Matt and Brian. And luckily yep. we did, because when we got fired, it was a the, the pandemic just started. There was nowhere oh. to work. Oh. The only thing that was giving us money was this podcast wow really so if we didn't have the podcasts i mean who knows what would have happened right because there was nowhere to i mean i think some indies were running but the social distancing with the mass i'm like i just left wwe my first show back's not gonna be some you know outside <laughs> show social distancing right. with, like, i have more pride than that right so you um, just stayed boom yeah, yeah so uh i got a little cup of coffee to aw and it didn't work out and i was like what am i gonna do now because like there was no like i said no indies didn't know what to do um and, you know, I started with Impact. Impact was great. And I, but I was still like, what, who was I, right? Was I just Zack Ryder, but my, using my real name? Like, what, yeah. what am I? I knew I needed to change. Yeah. Quick like, sidebar. Yeah. Rate, rate these figures. And on the show, All right. are, are, do, do we get these, are these high price or are these like, eh, what do you do? What uh, do you think? Not, do you not do? high price at all, but <laughs> I, I'm a big believer and it's all about like, what is the sentimental connection to you? Like, yeah. this is a, we're looking at a Jack specific X Pac yeah, King so. of the Ring. Like, we're you, I don't, or there's an Edge Ultimate Edition. Like, yeah. I, I mean, those are, I both, I have both of those figures in my collection. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not hating on it, you know? Yeah. Well, I, these were like my gifts when I went to Titan Tower. Oh, so there you like, go. Yeah, so. I just I don't know. I was like I was like I always look at them. I never open them. I'm like I need a guy. They look knows, nice. They yeah, look I need nice. a guy who knows their shit about these the figures. I'm like all right. So like I, I got my guy. Yeah. Are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they going to be worth something right. or something? Or are they just uh, decoration? Probably, probably not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. But okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I'm doing Impact and I'm doing random indies. I, I know like like it's working, but it's not. It, something's missing. But you can't just like turn heel on the indie. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't just like. <laughs> All right, now this show, I'm going to be a bad guy. Like I knew, right, right. I knew I needed something. I didn't know what it was. Um, and then I was approached uh, by GCW to do a death match with Nick Gage. And mm -hmm. my, my mm -hmm. knee-jerk reaction was, no. No way. I'm not going to wrestle this drug addict yeah. criminal. He was just on, like, <laughs> dark side of the ring, like, slicing up David Arquette. I'm like, no. I'm like, there's no fucking way I'm doing this. And then, like, I took a step back. I'm like, you know what? Like, people are going to talk about this. Like, people are going to and mm -hmm. it's going to create some buzz. Uh, I did not anticipate how much buzz it would create for me. Dude. It changed my career. It changed my it did. life. It changed everything for me. Just that night, um, that's what I needed, that match. And, you know, then I'd go out to indie shows, and, like, you know, I get a couple, like, you, a couple boos. I'm like, this is, I kind of like this. And the next, next show, like, 50%, then 75%. Now, every show I go to, they're Boom. flipping me off. And I remember at the time, like, impact was kind of hot at me they're like stop really? stop posting about this death match because you're gonna you're gonna start getting booed here i said i don't give a shit. this is like the best thing i've ever done <laughs> if the if the plan is me being a baby face guess what switch it yeah switch the plan hey, man, <laughs> you know i'll saying? never forget watching that like go crazy online i was like this is brilliant yeah <laughs> this and is brilliant because it's it's so left from like everything yeah. you've done it's a such a great different new coat of paint yes and literally was, blood was my new coat of paint literally <laughs> literally but it was like man like like i trust him i believe in him and yeah. i can't wait to see what happens next yeah and you know it just it, that that was what i needed that was the catalyst and you know now i call myself the deathmatch king i've had 
two death matches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, like I've conned the world and there's this death match guy. I have two. Two and <laughs> like give me a break, you know? So that was, you know, I didn't have, like to answer your question, I didn't have this master plan. I knew I needed a change, but I didn't know what it was. And that death match was what it was. Absolutely, you know? man. Absolutely. Swerve, uh, you want to chime in on that as well? Oh, like, uh, for me, um, for me, I was just trying to, all right, so the, the, it was like a it, the, the master plan, I would say, start off like this small, small speck of an idea yeah. and like once again, snowball effect type yeah. thing. And it was just like, OK, I would it was like fishing. I would throw something out there, see what if I got sure, it caught, sure. if it yes. caught a nibble. Yeah. And then I would like, OK, I go towards that yeah. a little bit. But if something I threw it this way and I got nothing, you steer your boat and you that's go right. yeah. to a different yeah. part of the to the lake. And that's what like because um, I, I my first match. Um, after my 90 days was against uh, Jay White at New Japan Strong. It was like main event. I was like, first of all, I don't have the cardio for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, we were like 19 minutes yeah. or 20 minutes. I was like, ooh, uh, well, WWE 20 minutes yeah. compared to a <laughs> right. New Japan well, Strong. Yes. Yes. A lot different. And, you know, so, but um, it was just like, okay. I, that was just like, jump, I was like me diving and um Diving in like uh, head first in right. the deep end. And then, but with the thing that I had that built off of that was the entrance song. Cause right. I just got out of the studio like maybe a couple weeks before with the uh, flash garments. We, we made big pressure. I've also was like spending like 10 days out in LA in Hollywood, just meeting people and networking outside of the wrestling. Cause I was like wrestling. I'll figure that out. Sure. Like I've done it for like 10 years plus right. at this point. That's going to come. But these other things I needed to be always, always felt like I, and I used to tell people this, I'm like, you, it's, it's great to be the, it's great to be a great wrestler, but you also in this day and age and what you're trying to build as far as like, whatever you're trying to be the guy somewhere, right. you have to be the great wrestler in addition to. Absolutely. And I, I was agree. trying to build my addition to. Sure. And so that's what, that would be my answer. Right. What is your addition to, whether it be, um, collectibles, whether it be a podcast, whether it be music, whether it be acting, whether yes. it be whatever it is, it always has to be like, okay, I'm a great wrestler, but here's what else I bring to the table. And it's an addition to, and it always puts you a step above you need a long tools. list, a long yes. list. Cause there's at this point, everybody's talented. Sure. Everybody can go. Yeah. I mean, especially a W WWE, like, Everyone can wrestle. It's not yeah. like the old days where, like, they pull someone from OVW and then you have Arn Anderson teach them how to wrestle before SmackDown. Oh. Like, everyone can go. Everybody can you wrestle know? now. You're seeing, like, I'm seeing people get signed in, like, maybe two months after the PC who've who, who, who never been in a wrestling room, who right. don't even watch wrestling. They're on TV. Yeah. They're on national television yeah. on, after two months. Yeah. Women and men. And the women are doing better. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, they caught this quick. Yeah. You know, so, like... Now, now it's like learning to wrestle to actually do the job isn't the hard part. It's connecting. Sure, it was just that's the, that's the, that's the part challenge part. now. Yes. Yeah, but that like uh, for me, yeah, for like find that addition to, and then like, it's not a gimmick necessarily, but it's just an addition to like okay, it just puts you a it, it, put, it gives you the edge above a lot of talent. Yes. A lot of people's like okay, we can get that guy, but we need this guy mm. because of the, the everything that goes along right. with it. You know what I mean? Uh, dude, I had a really dope weekend. I, just, I went to see Dave Chappelle live. Oh, that's awesome. In Tampa. That's that's phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. First off, I went to see two uh, stand-up shows, one in the Improv, one in, uh, in Orlando Improv, one in Tampa. And uh, both nights, somebody got thrown out. Really? <laughs> uh, being rowdy? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, dude, gosh. I don't know what it is. Uh, something about the society right now is like a little wild. Like, I'm seeing people get thrown out of football games. I'm seeing Jesus people get. Christ. I'm seeing people Settle run down. up on stage. Oh, geez. have you? Are you seeing that lately? I've seen people like going to like sporting games. Yeah. Like that like running on the field. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. that a lot. Yeah. Like, what's going on with the world right now, bro? Don't ask me. That's why I just wrestle. Play with toys. Nobody's <laughs> so, like, you, man. so all the heat that you've been getting on these shows, nobody's trying to get in or no, I, I've seen like the, everybody throwing yeah. stuff. But like yeah, that, that first night where where I beat yeah. Nick Gage, they were throwing the fucking bottles. Like I loved it. You know, yeah. I loved it. It wasn't until like afterwards where I was like watching the videos, like people were throwing pizza cutters too. Like oh. that, that could have been bad. <laughs> that could have been awful. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, I think I, at first been a game changer. Yeah, uh -huh. I think at first with GCW, like they, the fans genuinely. Me and I think now, like, all right, like 
they I think they I've earned their respect, but they still they'll they'll say fuck off and they'll boo me, but they're yeah. not trying to fuck kill me like they yeah. were in the beginning. You know, I think they I've earned their respect. I hope so. Actually, I don't give a fuck about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't care. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yes, like man, I would I would kill for some reactions like yeah. that. Like I don't think we're ever gonna get that in AW. But I'll kill for some reactions like that. Some I think old the, school. the reactions are the the most important part. Like people, yeah, yeah, it makes me feel so old when guys or girls come up to me on these indie shows. Like, hey, do you have any advice? And blah. blah. <laughs> so what, you become one of our questions. Like, how do we? Uh, like, where got, do we go? Where do we I'm start? Like, you gotta figure out how to connect with the audience. And I, I'm I'm a firm believer. I tell guys and girls this all the time. Like, when I get to a show, and I I'm a bit I'm a merch. I can have like a whole mall with me and I'm Man. sending my stuff and I see people like, listen, I'm not saying wrestling's not important. It is, but they're going over their match instead of like doing a meet and greet. I'm thinking, what the f are you doing? <laughs> what the f not only are you not making money. No. Okay. But you're not connecting, connecting with the fans. And now if you want to say, I'm a heel, I'm old school. Well then be a dick, be an <laughs> asshole. So they can boo you. Yes. What, whatever. You should be there connecting, making a real connection with these fans and not just like the yay boo connections. I'm saying like a real connection where they're invested in you. Like you said before, like the, their I, favorite band oh, with man. the t-shirt where like yeah. you're starting from here, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and let them follow your career. You now, know? now. Okay. So, do you see a difference between being the guy who made it back to the indies or the guy who's on his way up on in the indies? Do you have the same hustle and y'all get the same respect and equity? Okay, so let's also take a, a step back. I am I cannot pretend for a second that I didn't have a decade plus in WWE, so it's a lot easier for me to get bookings for people to come to me. Yeah. I, cannot, I can't yeah. pretend that for a second. I'm like, all right, sweetheart, okay, what are we talking about here? Chill out, dude. Okay, like I can look myself. Going at it. I can look you guys in the eyes. Like it's not like I'm this this indie <laughs> darling. I start from nothing. No, I came from WWE. But that's the heat, though. That's the heat. But also yeah. on the flip side, I will give myself a little Barry Horowitz pat on the back. Like when you come to my gimmick table, yeah. this isn't my honky tonk man run. You don't see all these eight by tens of my career in WWE. Right. This is all the shit that I'm doing now. Amen. This is all the merchandise yes. that I'm selling now, based on what I'm doing now. Whether it be Deathmatch King, Burger King crowds or indie god hats or all the or my own toys i will have one zack Ryder in wrestlemania eight by ten guilty as charged other than that this is not my honky tonk mm -hmm. man run going and doing the sunglass headband woo woo, woo take no bump right. i'm fucking busting my ass every single night because i have something to prove this is not my go back and make some quick money and it's not my honky. I keep yeah. saying honky talk, but you know what I'm, I'm like, talking damn, about. Dog. No, that's the honky talk, man. I love you, honky. But this, I'm not. I'm not going to the indies to a pass the torch. I'm here to light it for myself. A new torch. Mm, and this is my. Uh -huh. This is my nut up time. This is my. Yeah. I don't listen. I'm not trying to prove anybody wrong. If I do in the process, so be it. I'm trying to prove myself right. Yes, Correct. sir. You know what I'm saying. So this is yes. my. I, I like to call my Hollywood Hogan run or something like that. Yeah. This is my second coming of me. This is not like, all right, let's go do the same. Let's do like some yay boo spots. Woo, woo, woo. Get the fuck out of there. No, I'm busting my ass with whoever I'm in the ring with. And you know what? I'm also going to sell as much merch as possible. I'm trying yep. to sell my goal every single show. And it doesn't happen, of course. I want to walk out of there with more merch money than I do getting paid. That's my goal. Because I'm shooting for the stars. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Because this is not, yes, sir. This is not the, the wrestling friendship. It's the wrestling business. Talk about it. You know what I'm saying? You I'm glad somebody money. I'm glad somebody is saying you it. got to make Good money. Lord. Jesus Christ. So when I see these guys and girls like going over their high spots, and listen, I understand you need that. I'm not saying don't have a great match. Have a great match. Do you need it, though? I think you do. I, I understand that, but you need to make money, right? Don't complain. So-and-so's not paying me enough. Then guess what, motherfucker? Go sell some merch. <laughs> Go sell some eight by tens. Don't take a photo for free. I'm not saying you gotta charge a bunch of me. Charge something. Five bucks, something. ten bucks, fifteen bucks. It adds something. Up. Crumbs it make adds crumb up. cake. You know what I'm saying? It it, it, it adds I'm up. Sorry, I'm getting all fired up. Here. I love it. You're I love it. You preaching? I love bro. it. I just get so pissed off when I go in the backstage and they're no, going this to move. This is, but this is seminar stuff, man. Yeah. This is like this is stuff that needs to be taught at yes. seminars. It's like wow. like uh, not, not 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 the holds like. You're gonna learn that in school. You're gonna learn that when you, you actually go out there. Like, chin should be on shows. Down. Get the fuck out. You should be on shows. You should be on shows. How are you getting books? Yes, yes. Like, listen, there are some people <laughs> who are the drizzling <laughs> need work, but for the most part, right, right. 
if you're like a name in the Indies or like coming up, you know what you're doing and you're going to learn along the way. We all make mistakes. There's certain matches. I'm like, oh, f- can't believe it did that. Yep. Or a botch spot. Like, that's going to happen, right? And we're, we're all learning. Like, every single match I'm in, whether it's someone I know or someone I've never heard of, what can I learn from this match? Yes. What can I, you can always learn something, you know? Um, It was Chris Hero that taught me something. He said, like, um, you're always trying to get to the next booking. That's what you take at every booking that you're yeah. at. You try yeah. to either take, you get the money to yeah. get to the next booking. Yeah. Yeah. You get the, the 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 name recognition to get noticed to get yes. to the next booking. Yes. You get a fan that knows a guy to get yes. to the next booking. Yes. And you, like, it's always to get to the next booking. You know, and so there's always value in every book. Absolutely. There's always value, no matter if you're wrestling in front of 20 people, 200, 2,000. There's always value, even like on TV, it's to get to the next TV. Absolutely. <laughs> Stay on TV. Yes. It all it gets harder as you go up. It, it absolutely it does. gets yes. harder. Yes. I promise you. Yes. So everybody who talks about so-and-so, oh, he only got 30 seconds on TV. Good. Yeah. This mother- <laughs> I wish that they yeah. haven't gotten three. They've been, I got 30 seconds in three months. Do whatever yeah. you can with that 30 yes. seconds. Because yes. here's the thing. Especially like a TV situation, like an AEW. WWE, oh, yes. And like, again, I don't want to put myself over, but I'm going to for a second. No, oh, Like, you after the YouTube show died, and I was just there, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just here. And I will admit, I was getting a little bitter. You know, I was a little. Was and, that, a little and that's, na- and that's natural. To, and that's I think natural. you need a part and of I that. I think you need a part of that in you, bro. And, and but this is what I'm going to say. Like, I, I don't know. Listen, I'm not a naturally positive person, right? Like, I'm a natural, like that monster is half empty like that's natural <laughs> to me you know like that's natural to me you know what i'm saying that's my right, natural right, right. in my brain but i had to teach myself how can i f- switch this mindset right so I, this is gonna sound ridiculous but swear if you might be able to back me up I got, you, got a you wwe environment maybe the same for aw there's only three things you can truly control it's gonna sound ridiculous your physique no one's gonna say you can't work out you can't mm-hmm. get in great shape right mm-hmm. your f- gear yep. no one's gonna say hey swear if your gear's too f- good tonight Right? Right. And no one can say you can't be happy. You can't be positive. So, like, no one can, if you can control your gear, your physique, and your attitude, bro, it sounds ridiculous, but those three things, once I just focus on that and I couldn't let the bullshit affect me, just yep. things just started to change all of a sudden, yeah. you know? And I say always ready. So, I, I was always ready, whether I'm in a match that's I'm fucking already in the ring getting squashed by Rusev or like, hey, we need two seconds tonight. I was ready for whatever. Mm-hmm. And one day, this was before Raw or SmackDown. One of those shows they taped, what a main event, Shotgun Saturday Night, whatever the f*** it was. I was wrestling somebody, just a regular f***ing match, right? Throwaway match. And by chance, Vince McMahon was in his office eating his f***ing steak and then watching it. And the next day in the meeting said, how come I'm not doing anything with this guy? Which snowballed into, I was on this list to be in this ladder match for WrestleMania. I'm like, holy shit! like, I'm going to be in this match? Yep. I'm not doing shit. Next, next week, I'm off the list. I'm like, you know what? It was cool that at least I was considered, <laughs> right? And Neville, Pac, he broke his ankle or his yep. ankle. With the Jericho and I, match. And I said, this is my chance. Road Dog was the head of creative. The next day I went up to him and I just, I, I blacked out and I just spilled my guts why I should be in that match. And one of the things I said was, I've never heard my music play at WrestleMania. That wasn't like a, a scripted line just came out. And he later told me that's what got me. And he went to bat for me and I got in that match at WrestleMania. And he, But you got in the match and it wasn't off of your moves it right. wasn't off of your wrestling yeah. it was like for your connection yeah. to that then, moment that and just that <laughs> match being in that match was i was there me. for that too and then i win yeah. <laughs> i was there Which i was, was like listen, i was like, oh, like, it's like, dead. like I was awesome dude but just just the fact that i was walking down that aisle finally with my music i had been at wrestlemania before like whether you know it was edge was undertaker we did a little run in right or i was a part of like team teddy versus team johnny i come out to Teddy Long's music, where like I love Teddy yeah. for my media moments. I'm wearing a Teddy Long T-shirt yep. that I was not allowed to remove, you know. <laughs> yes. And like the screen behind me is a giant Teddy Long head, you know. what I'm saying, and then I was in every Jabroni Battle Royal they have ever had, right. but I never heard my music play at WrestleMania. Mm. So that was the win, and then of course to actually win the the match, and then Ziggler waves over my dad. My dad's like, okay, hops the guardrail for real. Like oh, yeah. at the time, I was furious. Looking back, like a life. Like, w- one of the best moments of my life, for sure. But yeah. at the time, I was like, what the f- you doing in the ring, Dad? You know what I'm saying? And it was, Still in my heat, Dad. Come fucking, on. Uh, we were in Dallas, and of course, my dad bought a WrestleMania cowboy hat. He tries to put it on my head. I'm like, get the f- thing off me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But the moral of the story is, like, you always got to be prepared, always ready. Just bust your f***ing ass. Because, like, you know, I'm sure there's going to be times where you're not doing much in AEW. But what if Tony Khan said, tonight, you have a three-seg match against so-and-so? Like, 
You better block me in shape. You yep. better be ready to go. Yep. You know? And that's happened. That's happened. See? I, I went in at like, uh, this is a true story. I went in at like 5.30, 6.30, and we're like in uh, Denver. So we're like an hour behind. Yeah. So the show yeah. goes on at 7 over there. Um, 5.30, I go in and I was just like, hey, just making sure you need me for anything. Yeah. What's going on? He's like, actually, I need a main event for Rampage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You got it. So, but and you, once again, Show goes on at seven. I gotta shoot a promo yeah. to promote the match yeah. for Rampage at like live. Yes. They had to get a promo for Rampage and all that right. stuff for that, uh, later that night. Then do the match in Denver, which is like altitude Apple's higher. Fire, so blow. I'm like, woo! Yeah. Main event match. So it's, it comes to you, like once again, communicating, going in, yeah. asking, just yes. asking. Nobody's gonna. You're never gonna lose your job just asking a question unless you're being disrespectful like condescending right, sure, yes. but like but like asking a genuine question about how you can do your job better or provide for their product right. that you are a product absolutely. of you know sure. absolutely it, like we gotta look at it as a business and not as just we're having fun wrestling yes yes we can have fun wrestling. yes like this is, a, this is our dream we're yeah we're, we're fake fighting and spandex but at the end of the day it is a business, is a business. in the grand scheme of things and you know we need to make sure that we're doing the best we can for the people who are paying, you know, our checks. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. Uh, like I, I like I, wanna, I wanted to say, I, I said it before you guys, um, uh, uh, before you came in when, at Chappelle yeah. show. He said this one thing that's a little nugget. I'm gonna literally, I'm gonna leave with for a while. Um, after uh, during his set, he was like, he said his wife talk, said something to him. She was like, "Hey, like your job looks fun. It seems, it seems like you have a lot of yeah. fun with your job." He's like. My job's not fun. My job's a job. I'm fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Woo!" Yes. That was my gospel, yes. and I kind of I'm going to leave with that. And so that's how you can. That's kind of how you can relate to sure. wrestling, right? Are you going to be the fun of the matches or the product of what you see on TV? Right. But sometimes the job isn't fun. The job is a job. It's not just you know? traveling. You know, it seems like it's great traveling all over the world. You're not seeing this stuff. You know, I'm you're tired. Like, I was. Paris. Hotel. Yeah. I didn't see Paris. Sure. <laughs> it's all, you know, how you make the most of that opportunity, whether it be an opportunity on television or like this is your career. Like, what are you going to do with it? Are you, like you said, you're yeah. going to be fucking miserable, I'm fucking tired, blah, blah, blah. Or are you going to be happy that you're living your dream or whatever? Yeah. Like, you got to find that that balance, you know? Oh, without a doubt. Like, when have you felt like it, um, music was a job? Wow. I, you know, man, great question. I feel that. Oh, man, what a great question. I feel I battle it, bro, honestly, probably every other day sometimes. Because working with you and working with other people where I don't really get to think about it and I kind of could just enjoy the creative process, it's it's more fun. But when I'm by myself and I have to do the stuff that I do every day within the music business. You have deadlines to meet. Deadlines to meet. I'm like, helping like, artists with this or yeah, this and themes. That. We need this. This, this song. <laughs> this theme song for this wrestler. That stuff. That one. That isn't as bad as working on the normal stuff. Because there's a lot of, you know, talking to artist representatives and labels and trying to do the music business part of it is absolutely terrible. It sucks to me. And a lot of artists will tell you that. Especially guys that are like kind of DIYers like myself. That aren't like really associated with like a record label, that has to do stuff on their own. It's it it's a lot, man. And I learned how to like kind of um, keep my peace without it, and learn what to deal with and what I don't deal with. So it's it's a lot, man. And, but you know, like we're in the same we're like I always say we're in the we're in the same boat, but we're just different parts of the ship in the entertainment business. Whether in the music business, sports. Mm -hmm. We're all, all in the same thing. It's all, all within the same realm. It's just that we're all in different parts of the boat. So, you know, I learned how to, like he said, you know, you're in it to make and make money and to make and to make the most out of it for yourself. So once I learned how to separate my feelings from how to make the money, then I was good, you know. But just dealing with the business because it's creative art. You guys are artists yourselves. You know, you guys have a more physical art, but there's a lot that goes on behind it, as in with the look. With selling merchandise, same thing with us. Me being a DIY, if I don't sell merch, I ain't eating. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's the same exact thing with you guys. You guys are at the merch table. It's the same thing with us. We have to push the merchandise. We have to, if we work on these songs with certain people, we have to make sure we get our money for it. Certain things like that. And it, it becomes a lot. But I also understand, too, that when I took my emotions out of the business part and really realized how I can maximize my 
my value in that way. And kind of like what you said with your career, bro. Sometimes you're not, you know, it. I look at like having a, a good match and knowing, you know, uh, in wrestling, whether it, you, you realize you had a good match or whatever your situation is, it's the same thing with like putting out a song, a song you truly believe in, but the fans might not be as receptive to it. Or the, you know, or it might not do as well as you think. You put all this money behind the record. You put all this time behind it, and you thoroughly believe in it. And, you know, it might not do as well. But then you might go in the studio and do some bullshit, and it might, <laughs> and it might be the biggest song of your life. Right, right. You know, mm-hmm. so, it, and it's just learning to be comfortable with that. So, yeah, I think that there's a, definitely a great parallel in between what you guys do and what we do as artists, and you being an artist now, sort of, as well. You see both sides of it because it's definitely a lot. Yeah, um, one t- one thing that I try to keep in both is and uh, like literally uh, the wrestling and the music is try not to sacrifice too much of the art mm. to for the yeah yeah because yeah. like at first like I'm not gonna lie to you this is probably the first time I ever say it out loud but like the first time when we were first making the big pressure song I was like I don't know I don't know if I I don't know if I'm feeling it I didn't I wasn't 100 percent sure but. I trusted Flash. I trusted Prophet, the producer. I trusted Khalid, who uh, co-produced on it. These are guys that, these guys that, that won a Grammy with freaking Kanye. Yeah, I kind of got to trust that, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, but it was not necessarily the song I would make, yeah. like in the, the, right. the type of rhythm, and but like th- that's not my sure. art, but it's still art. And I was like, okay, I'm not sacrificing too much of my art form for, from it because, like, I'm still like it's still me. And I got to find me in yes. that song, yeah, in a sense, yeah. in where I can find that. And so, like, uh, being adaptable is probably one of the biggest things I've learned in the wrestling industry. Very important. That has sure. translated to other sure. forms of this, like yes. being ad- adapting to the music, adapting to podcasting, like yes. co-hosts, being when he's not here, me having, okay, I got to yeah. <laughs> myself, okay, yeah. you know, run it, like, do a live, you know, like, or, like, building, trying to build chemistry with a, a sure. guest or another a cameraman. Having to adapt to certain things, you know. So here's here's the question that I have for you, Matt. Though, in in relation to what we're talking about, I want to bring it around to this point because I'm pretty sure it's the million dollar question you always get asked. But knowing for how where you're at now in your career and what your motivation is, with all your goals and everything that you're doing, everybody I'm pretty sure always asks you, "Will you go back? Will you go right. back?" Now you're at a point now where you've raised your brand to a to a much bigger level. You know, and it's almost not trying to go back to do the same thing. Right. What is what is your motivation? You know, when people ask you that question, say, you know what? You know what, guys, I would or I wouldn't, but I'm not going to do the same shit I was doing before. That What is your motivation? If you do go back, you make sure that all the cards are betting on you. You love these loaded questions, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. yeah so, man. That's my deep thought thinker over so, there. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll deep thought uh, respond to that. So, you know, I was talking with Chelsea. I'm gonna name drop uh, John Cena. Was that, we went out Ooh. to dinner. Me, Chelsea, Ooh. John Cena, uh-huh. uh, Shea. Uh-huh. And, and John was asking Chelsea, like, what is the difference between this run and the last one you had? And Chelsea said, now I can turn it off. Like, I go do Raw, and then when I'm home, I'm home. As mm-hmm. opposed to last time, which was NXT, the PC was just for their brain. Yep. And then a couple of days later, Chelsea said to me, like, Matt, like, you. I think I was like pitching some idea for a spot at some indie show she's like you used to be able to turn it off i'm like yeah you're right because in wwe i had those only those three things i could control but now i have to control everything yeah everything yeah, i have man. to control so yeah, yeah man. It off. my brain is always that's going. true and these past these past three years like i don't care how you define success accolades money happiness in my opinion which is the only one that matters yep i've been the most successful i've ever been in my career so would i ever go, you know, Tony Khan called me today or Triple H, of course I would have the conversation. Right. Like, I'd be lying if I said I never wanted to wrestle on pay-per-view again or wrestle at Mass Square Garden right. again or walk into Walmart or Target and see my action figure on the shelves again. I'd be lying if right. I said, no, I don't want that. Right, right, right. Of course, but at the same time, I don't want to go to AEW or WWE just to be a guy on the roster. No. Nothing against that, but been there, done that. Like, I did that already. Um, you know, and, and back in the day when I started the YouTube show, like, I guess I kind of wanted to prove as I got, you know, further along and I realized what I was trying to do. I kind of wanted to prove like, Hey, like if you bet on yourself, like you can, if you can put all the emphasis on yourself with social media, you can get yourself over, right. uh, you can get yourself noticed. So now I kind of want to prove like, Hey, like, listen, 
hey, WWE, number one and two is debatable which one is one and two. I'm not saying they're not. They're the fucking tippy top. But I want to prove that you can be a successful pro wrestler without those two. That's what I'm trying to do mm. myself. But at the same time, like, I'm not saying, like, a Tony Khan called, I'd say, click, wouldn't pick up. Of course not. Of course <laughs> right. I'd, Tony, what's up, man? Yeah. Oh, you need me for a glitch? Like, like, of course. Yeah. Or if, if Triple H called or Vince called. But right now, my goal is not, my goal is not to get back there. My goal is to, how big can I make this? Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. I, I, the, the almost, I hate to say the sky's the limit, but it, it kind of is. It is. I didn't have handcuffs on me before, but they're, if I did, they're off. Right? Yeah. Right. And I could take this. And, and, and whether it be with my podcast or I start a wrestling for your company yep. or all this, shit, I want to see how fucking high can I go? Exactly. You know, like, absolutely. We'll see. Absolutely. You know, I don't, you know, and that's, that's the challenge. But that's also the fun part. I think you also want to be in the, you want to, you want to be the one to write your ticket to. You want to be the, like, if, if you were going to get the right. call or whatever right. from either company, right. you'd be like, I'm in position to say like, to, I want this, I want this, I want this. Sure. You want to put yourself in that position. I think you're well on your, you're, you're I think you're there. And, and listen, no one's ever going to have leverage against one of those. Certainly not me. Right. Right. But because of the podcast, because of this indie run, because of the wrestling for your business, like you are an addition, an addition to, I, I don't like just need the first offer that comes my way. Like no. I'm good. Like I, I made more, <laughs> I made more money last year than I ever made in pro wrestling. You're wow. In wow. So yeah. I got, it's like, I don't need a, a check. Right. It would be nice. Absolutely. <laughs> so absolutely, absolutely, it'd be, it'd be absolutely. Nice. Of course. But, the, but the thing, there's things that come with that check, though. Of course, yes. There's and things that come with that check. Right now, yeah. I'm just I'm just riding this wave, and I just want to see how 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 long can I stay on the surfboard, you know what I'm saying? Or this boogie board. You yeah. Know? Like, how long can I stay on? That's a fact, and brother. It's fun. It's a challenge. And, you know, every weekend's a challenge, and it's a grind. But I love it, man. I love it. Whether it be, like I said, the, the podcast or the the wrestling figure business or the, the, the indie wrestling business. I, I love it all. Um, it's, I'm just having the time of my life right now. But like I said, to answer the question, if one of those two companies coming back, of course I would have a conversation, but you know, the stars would have to align. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Man. brother. Let's get into the fun stuff, man. We've been talking wrestling <laughs> too long. I don't like it, man. All right. So what are we watching right now? What are we, um, what are we on? Like, as far as like movies, Oh, I thought, I'm like, oh, watching Halloween Havoc night too. Uh, <laughs> I'm not watching this. I'm, um, I'm waiting to see the homie. Yeah, you know. So, but um, yeah, like, what are we watching? What are we like? I'm not. I'm, I'm not a big TV watcher. Every once in a while, Chelsea yeah, yeah. and I will find like a series on it's Netflix or something. The, it's usually little ladies that'll find yeah, shows. She, have you we, ever we noticed that? This show, uh, Suits. It, it's on Netflix. I'm watching Suits. Yeah. I, I, at first, I'm like, I don't want to watch. It, but we're I'm, I'm into in. it too. I'm into it. <laughs> I just got uh, it just like two weeks ago. Otherwise, like as crazy as it sounds, like I I love this this the the wrestling figure podcast I have. Now yeah. we have our own line of toys, so it's crazy to like I'm dealing with like contract negotiations with like Macho Man's estate, you know, to get like Macho oh, Man's wow. so like, stuff like that, like business stuff like that. Like, oh. is it work? Sure, but it doesn't feel like work because like you know, if I didn't become a wrestler, I wanted to make wrestling toys. So right. I'm doing that. Like, listen, we're not. In Walmart or Target by any means, but you know, we're, we're making, we're making guys like Macho Man, Andre the Giant, and then indie guys, like That's guys cool. that run, like Joey Janela or Effie, or yeah. like this week we're make we're uh, up for pre-orders at Alley Catch, like we're Ooh. making, our Anderson, you know, like we're just doing, That's some innovative, just, man. Yeah, we're That's just, dope. you know, it's That's me and, and Brian Myers, and we have a couple partners, and like, out Brian, man, yeah. Brian was always dope, man. It's just, it's like a, it's a full, t- I have multiple full-time jobs, but I feel, it doesn't feel like work because I'm. Are you doing I figures love. in other forms? Like, are you doing like comic books or so anything like, uh, uh, like Star Wars? I, or we're not yet, but we're working on getting okay. other licenses. I don't want to spill the beans here because it's not right, confirmed. Right. But the goal is, listen, I love making wrestling. But right, I right. love to make Power Rangers or Turtles man. or whoever. Um, those, big, yo, the new Ninja Turtles movie. I liked it. I, I liked it. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, I liked it more than across the the Spider Verse. I haven't seen that, so I'm not really. Sure. Yeah, this the both of them. I got to see the new Ninja Turtles. I haven't seen that. Still Dog, seen it. I might make you stay and watch it, bro. It's, good. it's really good. I like it. It's really funny. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate really goal. Funny. Is to get like uh, a is to get like a license like Turtles or Power Rangers, and then yeah. to get into like a Target or a Walmart, you know, instead of just like our website, which is fine for now. But, you know, I want, we want to keep growing, and of course we're going to shoot for the stars. And sure, that's sure, the, for sure. If you're, if you're not shooting for the stars, like what the f*** are you doing? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, that's oh, just my oh, opinion. Amen, you know? yeah. I think yeah. we all can agree with that yeah. in this room. We're not shooting for the stars. What's the point, that's right? What are we doing that's here? innovative, though, man. Make having your own toy line to be able to make cut. Dog, that is some innovative. I'm trying to think of like anybody that's ever done anything like that in the wrestling industry, bro. I think that's so another... what happened was like you know I'm a huge wrestling for your fan, or a wrestling fan, wrestling collectible fan. So I knew okay with for stuff for my merch table, my website. I wanted to make stuff that I thought. You know, I would like if I was a Macarona fan, you know? So we found this 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 guy, Mike Knicks, his name. He was a fan of our podcast. And he was able, oh, you want foam fingers? I can do that. You want keychains, whatever. And then one day he came to us and said, hey, I think I can make you wrestling figures. I said, bro, if you can figure out how to do this, <laughs> we'll cut you in. You're a fucking part. And he, he, he figured out, like, we, these are, like, legit from China. Like, he's dealing, he's dealing with China. And now we have this guy who designs them. This guy, TTD, kills it. And, like, literally, we've made, like, over 100 figures uh, in the past three years, which is nuts. So we started making these things called Major Bendies. They're, like, kind of like, kinda like the, the mid-'90s WWF uh, Bendem figures. Yes, sir. I yes, remember sir. those. We just started yeah. making something called Big Rubber Guys. They're, like, the LJN guys from the 80s. Yeah. So we're doing all, like, old-school guys like that. So, of course, you know, we made me and Brian first to make sure we were able to do it. Like, we were the guinea right, pigs. Right, right, And then since then, we've made... Demolition, Ric Flair, Wow, uh, Sergeant Slaughter, Janetti. We just had Andre the Giant, Macho Man. And these are like official. Like, who's your guy? Who was your figure back in the day? Uh, like Macho Man was my guy, my number one guy, or Warrior Hogan, yeah. like all those guys. And then, then eventually, Shawn Michaels was my first, the first heel bad guy I ever liked. But I didn't know why. I think it's because he t- took the great bumps and having kick ass matches. But I, he was entertaining. As man. a kid, I couldn't yeah. comprehend. Oh, he's taking great bumps. I didn't know what a great bump was. You know what I'm right. saying? But I right. wish I, could, you know, so there's times I could take. I wish I could take my brain back to that. Yeah, <laughs> so right. Like I like this guy, but I don't know why I yes. like him. Yes. Like I wish I could take my brain back yes, to that sometimes. Exactly. Like I want to be a childhood memory of wrestling. Like I want to like somebody because they were just cool. So you you got an AEW figure coming out soon, right? I don't know, man. Like that was like <laughs> that was two double or nothing pay per views ago. Oh. Like that was announced. I remember. I remember, and that that was the weekend I got scanned for it. Yeah. and Everything. I like. I seen the whole three D thing. Yeah. Fast forward, double or nothing the following year. I'm like, hey, hey guys, <laughs> I'm signing more. Yeah. Where's my? Right, I want right. right. Like I, I want to like take Mary Mysterio down, put my yes, guy yes. there. You know, you have two WWE ones, right? Yeah, 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 cool. yep. I, I, and I had the, ra- the not the ring model, but the the oh the, yes, yes, the, 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 the uh, FTC the, one, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Which I like that one a lot. The last one I had, I gave to my mom, but that one I liked a lot. I like that more than my WWE. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because you have a, they're called basics, so it's yeah. not like the elite ones with all the accessories and. Sh- you had the you had the chase though, the alternate gear, right? Yeah, there you go. yeah. Okay. yeah but I was a, I was in yeah. a cool little like. <laughs> I was in a cool little like group of like the guys that were released. Yeah. Like the it was like The Rock and uh, the, I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. The rock. Like, it was like the young rock too, the, <laughs> the, the turtleneck rock, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. that rock. I was like, oh, that's fire. I was like, dope. Uh, they just killed it, by the way. That's real fire. But I wanted a, I, w- I was always a fan of like the box. I wanted the yes. box. I wanted the cool yes. box. Yes. I, got, I got the basic damp yes. box, and I was like, cool. But I wanted the you know, absolutely, you know. Yeah. I didn't. I never got that one, but AW has some really dope, like really cool, like they're big and bulky, yes. and like really they, fancy they, looking. They, a lot of those like ringside collectibles exclusives are really yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're like gold. Of the I, I want like, but now so I'm gonna be like out of date. It's like two. <laughs> it's like two <laughs> that, years that ago. Always I don't wear none of that. Yeah, no more. that always happens. Though, you know, unfortunately, yeah. So I'm like, ah, I wanted, you know, but. I I might I might be in the video game. Oh, there you go. You download content, man. I might be in DLC. If Dan Housen gets in, I should get in. <laughs> That's some bullshit. Dan Housen. Come oh. on. You know? Man. Even though he's super he sells a lot of merch. He's yes, he is he uh, sells a lot of merch. We, I we text all the time about merch ideas. He he's got it. He's got it figured out. And yeah, to this I, day I've never seen a Dan Housen match. To this day. I have. <laughs> And I, I don't want to buy his merch anymore. No, 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 no. Shout out Dan Housen. I still, I still actually do. He has like the television one. I yeah. want to get that one. He was like, well, Dan Housen, someone who obviously gets it. You know, who got over on he's social figured it media. Out. And you know, back to social media, how important it is for. I don't think like if you're in WWE or AW, where you're like, be like, you don't have to tap out on social media. Like if they're not no. getting used, like you could still use it. Like it is <laughs> yeah. this this unbelievable tool. It's free advertisement. Yes, it is. Fu- okay, which is great. A double-edged sword is free for everybody. So how are you going to stand out? That's why I always tell these people on the say, indies, like, you're on a list of... Like, you yeah. gotta, you got to figure out. I don't know how so-and-so is going to get over, but you got you to figure out. The opportunity is there, whether it be... There's Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, all these 
things, and they're free. Yep. Being free. They are. So people who aren't using these things, I, I just don't. Okay, if you're not using it and then you're still complaining, I don't understand. Nah, nah, right? Nah, nah. That's Amen, brother. Like, you're preaching, brother. Like Chelsea uh. says to me all the time, you posted six times today. I'm like, that's not enough. Because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not on WWE or AW. I need to promote myself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, no one's going to like Instagram.com slash the Matt Cardona. They're on their phone swiping all. So I and if something sure happens to see, they yeah. They see me. I don't care if they're yeah. on fucking 10 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night. I'm going to be there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I know nothing about the algorithm. I, I just know post, 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 post. <laughs> you know, when in doubt, post. <laughs> I don't care if it gets zero <laughs> likes, a million likes. I'm just going to post because no matter what, whether they're watching my matches or not, whether they love me or not, they know what I'm doing. That's hilarious. You know? They know what you're doing. That's all I care. And, know they know, and they know that you're not doing nothing. Right. <laughs> yes. Like, yes. That's the key yes. part. Like, like, like I had a lazy day. I'm, I didn't do nothing. But... Social media doesn't know I didn't exactly, do nothing. Right. They know I did a yes. podcast. They yes. know I like so it's like they like, I'll go to work sometimes. They'll be like, Dad, you busy all week. I'm like, eh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I just stored up a lot of shit and I just yes. had to post yes. at the right time. Yes. Like so I, I appear busier than I actually am. Like, how do you have time to do all this stuff? Man, I did back in like two that like like three months ago, right. man. Y'all just seeing it. But or or you just stack a lot of stuff in your days. There's a lot of ways to make things work, man. It's just gotta really work. And you gotta network. You Sometimes you, there's people that will work for you, right? Yep. In exchange for something you got, that's a that's a one of the big things I would say. Um, me and Tease did a seminar a couple yep. uh, months ago. Back, mm -hmm. and they're like, "How do I get to this?" I'm like, "Y'all know y'all don't have to spend money to get all the things that sure. you're looking for, right. or just to, to get the look. Yeah, there's man. you have stuff that these guys want, and you they are looking for what you have. Right? There's ways to make this work. Get this guy has this, like, you know, somebody that has something that can st struck, strike a deal, yes. get this. Or even if you can't do it now, like do the loan and freaking, Hey, I'll get like, I'll pay you back, but I'll get you this, this, that, that, that. And then you like, and then you work overtime sure. for that stuff. Like there's even, even something like this podcast, right? We're filming it for YouTube. You could take these clips and put them on TikTok. You can put them up. Yep. Like reels one thing and then splice it up and then splice that up and then splice that up. Like you would take Monetize. one piece of content and use it for so many different things. Yeah. You know? Especially like like this stuff, like what if we say something, whether it be motivational or clickbaity, then you could put it on Instagram and then put it on TikTok. There's so many different things. This guy you know? gets it. This guy I don't know if it. I get it, but I'm just trying this guy I'm just gets trying. It. I'm throwing it's the wall, see what sticks. Man, that, that's how that's how that's how social media <laughs> that, got that, here. That's how social media got here. That's how social media got here. Throwing the wall, that's, bro. Right. Bro, that's how our careers have been made. We that's just the thing, bro, like, the it's funny, like so many, uh, like be, be real, like I'm be real. I never wrestled a day in my life, but I know that just knowing from what you're saying and what you said this whole podcast that if I was and if you was on the card and I was a wrestler, I'll pull you to this. I'd be like, yo, bro, how can I <laughs> yep. expect? I would ask you a whole bunch of knowledge out just outside of the wrestling stuff because you're always ahead. You seem always ahead of what everybody else moving. is doing. There's always he, movement. There's always him. movement around. Him. He's always, always ahead. I'm always trying. Not everything I do is a success. I wish I was, I, but it's not. Like right. especially when it comes to merchandise too. Like for instance, I was talking about earlier. I got. I'm like, oh, you know, be really cool because these deathmatch king crowns, but kind of like the Burger King style crowns. Oh right? yeah. Right. So like, look at whatever. I'll sell for like ten bucks. A cheap little item. I had to get in like hundreds and hundreds made because I had to create the mold. I'm like, these are gonna fly, bro. I can't. Give them away. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not that's, everything I do that's what I'm saying, is going to be a success. I'll like, be like, oh, bro, what's your PayPal? I just need ideas. <laughs> I'll pay you know, for ideas, bro. Like, uh, you know, like the, the Indie God thing just kind of took off one day. I was like, for instance, like I was at GCW in LA and I'm like, oh, I, I got this like Back to the Future gear and I wore it one night. It was a one and done. That's it. Then the next month, I'm like, oh, I'll do, I'll do Indiana Jones, but I'll come up the Indie God. That was supposed to be a one and done gear. Wow. Like, I was like, ooh, there's like some responses. What if I just keep wearing this and call myself wow. the Indie God? Like, and then, listen, it's, it's taken off. It's worked out. Call then, and response. But then, on the flip side, I'm like, ooh, I'm not the, I'm not a free agent. I'm the agent. Let me trademark it, blah, blah, <laughs> no, Nothing. No, nobody can. <laughs> I spent thousands of dollars on <laughs> trademark. I own the agent. But it means nothing. So, like, not everything is going to work. So it's, you, a gamble. <laughs> it's a gamble. It's a it gamble. Is. It really is. Even, even Jericho would tell you that. Yeah. Jericho was like, man, we tried this. Well, okay. Let's try this. Back to the drawing board. But Just could try it. Yeah. Like this throw that away, throw it up, but there's something yes. here with this. Like this works. With the fishing earlier, it's like 
walking. Yeah. You gotta see you gotta also know when to walk away. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. My like, line is broke. I'm like, out. I'm still trying I'm this. I'm in MLW now, I trying this agent thing. It's still not getting over. I'm like, one last try. Let me <laughs> <laughs> I spent thousands of trade, but like, let me put it on gear. Let me it's not working. It's, I I think it's time to maybe, walk maybe away. It's a, maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's, I need a woman. Maybe I need a fashion. Maybe I need a bear. Maybe I need something, you know. I was even today I was thinking about well, what if I could give the agent one last try that we're almost like like right to censor gear or like matrix gear. I'm like, oh. then I gotta wrestle in that shit. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, not giving up on the agent. <laughs> I, I imagine I'm just like there's this board. It's, uh, like all it's this. a board in my head. Oh, my psycho yeah. brain. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Yo, man, it's been really, really dope having you on, man. It's like, been a fun combo. Thanks yeah, for having no, me. Oh, of course, man. This is like one of the ones I've always wanted for a while now. And it's like, okay, this move, man, shuffling around when I get him still. And I think shout out Giancarlo for giving me this man's yeah, contact, <laughs> by the way. I was like, would he be cool? Would he be cool? I don't know. Like, I never really talked to Matt like that. But <laughs> but yeah, shout out to Giancarlo for making the connection. And like um, like I said, dude's full of information. Hopefully, everybody who subscribes to us and likes and watches every video we post, really watch this one, especially if you are trying to figure out your own way, however it is, whatever form of job, occupation, form of media, whatever form of entertainment. There's a lot of healthy knowledge that you can pull from this man and from our talks, from our discussions. But Mac, I donate. This is just me giving you your roses. Big oh, dog, thank man. you so much. And I want to thank you because you know I'm going to take this and use it for my content. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you will. Smart, yes, man. you I'm will. Gonna, you know I'm going to steal it. You're going to be seeing this <laughs> on TikTok, Instagram. That's what I Oh, yeah. You want me to do a podcast? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, what's the time stamp on this? And then cut this, cut this. <laughs> This is a smart man, brother. I know what I'm doing here. It's bro, smart man, brother. It's what we do. You, you content, content, you can't content. Work, content worker. Well, I can't work. Worker. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. And it's going to get on Sports Kita. It's going to get on the Wrestling Inc. So he like, said this. He said this. You're going to get a bunch of yeah, right, coming, It's right. going to travel. And yes. we'll, uh, bro, duh, that's what we want. That's right. That's how we work. This is how we pay these bills. That's how we get the thing popping. But yeah, man. Thank you, bro. Appreciate thank you, you, man. TZ, man, you got anything to say? You got anything to say? Yes, man. Like the, like the man said, Ben, make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the like button, comment, man. You know, like we said, man, the word algorithms, I don't know much about either. <laughs> I just know that we put stuff up on social media platforms. And if you guys rock with it, rock with it. And we thank you guys for all the support, all the love. You know, subscribe to my, you know, my brother's Spotify for all his music that he has going on. Subscribe to ours, subscribe to mine, subscribe to the groups. A lot of stuff we're all doing, a lot of projects that we're all doing that are in the works. Currently, things that we can announce, we can't announce now, we're coming later. Shout out to my brother who's killing it on AEW every week. Shout out to my man Matt who is destroying it right now, taking over the whole world. And shout out to us, man, for all coming together and having a great podcast and showing love. This guy is a boatload of knowledge. This guy had me thinking like, damn. Maybe I could try to some more rap song. I don't know. You know just, just, he got me like, damn, I don't post enough. Like, oh, man, oh, damn, I need to, I need to, I need to edit this the right way. But thank you, man, for coming on. Thank you guys. Appreciate right, you, bro. Show them where you can find you. All the stuff, all uh, the goods. Uh, social media at the Matt Cardone. I got the Major Wrestler Podcast every Friday. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Pod and youtubecom slash the Matt Cardone. Check me out. Book Matt Cardona at gmail.com if you want to book me, but I have like no dates, so good luck. <laughs> hey, that's what we want. End of 2023. See you in 2024, yeah. my brother. <laughs> I guess so. Actually, I'll be seeing you at House of Glory December oh, yes, 1st, brother. There. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so, as always, be confident in everything you do. Wash your ass. Do your homework. We out of here. See ya.